and geographical boundaries are extremely important. Um, Same-sex marriage was made lawful in 2013 with the Marriage Same-Sex Act. This act amended previous legislation and it provided a new legal framework for same-sex uh, couples who wanted to get married according to a civil or a religious ceremony. And it also established a framework for the same-sex couples that had uh, registered a civil partnership and wanted to convert it into a marriage. And this conversion can be in, uh, um, on uh, civil grounds, but also on religious grounds. In this case, uh, the conversion will remain in a civil process, but um, after the conversion, there may be um, a blessing or another uh, ceremony. This act uh, does not apply to the Church of England and the Church in Wales, uh, so no place of worship of these two religious, religious organizations can opt in uh, according to the process that I will describe in a moment. And um, so all the data that I will describe, uh, they do not take into account the Church of England and Church in Wales. Precisely to ensure that no religious organization and no individual could be uh, forced to solemnize the same-sex marriages or could be held liable for not doing so. This act also introduced a number and uh, an extensive suite of uh, provisions and exceptions that, for instance, uh, state that no person or religious organization can be compelled to opt in or refrain from opting out to solemnizing marriage of same-sex couples. And also that no person or religious organization can be compelled to consent to a religious marriage ceremony um, of a same-sex couple where the reason is that it is a marriage of a same-sex couple. And uh, in more general terms uh, that no one can be held uh, liable under anti-discrimination law for not consenting, not participating, or not um, otherwise uh, conduct a same-sex marriage. These exceptions were introduced precisely to address the concerns and the uh, worries of religious organizations that the introduction of same-sex marriage would, uh, could be used to force them into solemnizing these marriages. Um, and uh, precisely in order not to force uh, any religious organization to do this, uh, same sex uh, uh, marriage or same sex act uh, required those religious organizations that want to solemnize the same sex marriages to opt in uh, to abide to a very detailed uh, process. Um, the general rule uh, that regulates both um, different sex and the same-sex marriages in religious uh, places of worship is that these marriages uh, can be celebrated only in uh, certified places of worship. A certified place of worship is any um, building that has been registered as a, a meeting place for religious worship. And so uh, here we see the first uh, geographical constraint. Uh, um, any religious organization that wishes to solemnize the same-sex marriages must submit an application um, to the superintendent registrar of the registration district where the building is uh, situated and ask that that place of worship uh, could be can be registered for solemnizing same-sex marriages. This, um, the application must be submitted by a propietor, a trustee of a place of worship, but it ha must receive the uh, approval of the um, religious authority in that place of worship. And obviously this rule uh, um, has been made in order to um, 
to avoid that a place of worship may be registered against the will of the religious uh, uh, congregation that is worshipping in that, in that place. And um, this process is heavily based on uh, spatial uh, constraints uh, because the focus is on the building, is on the registration district, and also on the uh, proprietor and trustees of these places. Um, this process does not apply to the Church of England, the Church in Wales, and also it does not apply to um, Jewish um, institution and to the Society of Friends. And I specify this because uh, in our research we, um, we didn't consider uh, Jewish or uh, places of worship from the, uh, from the Society of Friends because uh, they can't be described uh, as uh, registered uh, uh, places of worship. They can uh, solemnize same-sex marriages according to their rights and usages, but they are not registered. Um, the list of places that are registered for solemnizing uh, different sex and same-sex marriages is public. And from that list, we um, consider the number of places that are registered uh, for uh, different sex marriage and uh, the number of certified places of worship that are registered for same-sex marriage. And as you can see, there is a huge difference. In November uh, 2016, against uh, the uh, 22,884 places of worship that solemnized uh, different sex marriages, there were only 139 places that also solemnized the uh, same-sex marriages. And this number works out to be 0.5% of the total. So this picture gives an idea of the exclusion that is, uh, is experienced by same-sex couples who may wish to have a religious wedding in England and Wales. And even if um, in October 2017 and January 2018 uh, the number of places of worship have increased, the proportion remains uh, still the same, it, it, it has not changed. And this means that um, same-sex couples are more likely to live in a registration district where there is no scope to be married according to a religious ceremony. And the, the, uh, this um, exclusion and this disadvantage can be also expressed in other terms. Uh, so there is one place of worship solemnizing different sex marriages each 2,500 residents. But if we consider same-sex marriages, there is one place of worship every um, 300,000 residents. So a, it is a huge difference. And it means that, that also geographically, same-sex couples can't freely choose where to get married. And this, uh, um, we will see that this has an impact on the number of same-sex marriages that have been celebrated um, in the places of worship that we, con that we managed to contact. Um, also in uh, the list of uh, uh, registered places of worship, it is possible to have a picture of the religious organizations that so, uh, solemnize uh, same-sex marriages. And uh, um, there are different um, religious organizations such as Baptists, Buddhists, Spiritualists, Lutherans, Unitarians, and other reformed churches um, and designated religions and individual places of worship. The point is that no mainstream Christian religion uh, has opted in to same-sex marriage and there are no Islamic, Hindu or Sikh places of worship that carry out same-sex marriages. So um, these are um, non-mainstream liberal churches with uh, a limited number of uh, places of worship that can be registered. And for this reason, it is likely that if in the future other religious organizations will not opt in, the total number of uh, 
registered places of worship uh, carrying out same-sex marriages will remain just a tiny minority of the uh, overall number of places registered for same-sex marriages. And for instance, in the case of uh, unitarian uh, Unitarians, already 44% of all the places of worship have opted in, and this gives an idea of the uh, restricted options of same-sex couples and also of the fact that this, um, this gap is likely not to be filled if in the future other religious organizations will not change their position on same-sex <coughs> marriage. But this, uh, this, uh, this um, picture also shows the importance of uh, non-mainstream uh, churches that provide uh, the, uni the only opportunity for same-sex couples to get married according to a religious ceremony. And in our uh, research, uh, we tried to establish a contact with all uh, 139 places of worship that were registered in November uh, 2016. Um, we were able to contact uh, 113 participants and we distributed by email <coughs> an online uh, questionnaire. It was composed of uh, 32 questions of mixed style and uh, in, uh, between uh, September and November we received uh, 71 responses which is 63% uh, of the participants and uh, we consider it a good result. Um, the first finding I'd like to show you is uh, the religious affiliation of our respondents. Um, for the a significant majority, our respondents were Unitarian places of worship. But we also gathered data from uh, spiritualists, Baptists, other Reformed churches, and other individual places of worship. So this picture is uh, quite it's quite in line with the, the general <coughs> frame of religious organizations that is, um, that is mentioned in the public list about registered places of worship. But, but uh, the, uh, one of the most interesting findings was about the number of same-sex marriages that have been carried out in these places. We found that um, in these places, in these 71 places of worship, 83 same-sex marriages had been solemnized and that in contrast very few same-sex couples chose to convert their partnership into a marriage and we, re and we um, registered eight conversions of civil uh, partnerships into a marriage. These are small numbers but probably the most significant uh, picture is related to the number of marriages that have been carried out in, in each place of worship. Almost the majority, almost, sorry, almost half of our respondents, 33 out of 71, uh, have, haven't carried out any same-sex marriage. So they opted in, but uh, they have not um, solemnized any marriage uh, of same-sex couples. Almost a quarter 19 places of worship have solemnized one same-sex marriage and the remaining quarter is divided between uh, eight places that have solemnized uh, two marriages, um, four places of worship that have solemnized uh, three same-sex marriages and only five places of worship that have solemnized four or more <coughs> same-sex marriages. This um, slide shows that our respondents carry out small numbers, a uh, small number, sorry, of uh, same-sex marriages, and also that a significant uh, proportion of these places of worship have, has never carried out a marriage. So we we may wonder why uh, this the, the reality is um, composed of s uh, similar small numbers. And there are different reasons that may explain this reality. The first one 
may be related to the, and may be explained by the geographical location of uh, um, the same-sex marriages and uh, the spouses. <coughs> we found that in 80% uh, of these marriages, the couples lived uh, in the same registration district where the marriage was solemnized. Um, according to the Same Sex uh, Marriage Act, uh, it is possible to celebrate a marriage outside of the registration district where one or both of the couple live. But um, it is possible when uh, the usual place of worship is in another registration district or when they can't uh, get married according to their religious beliefs uh, in their registration district. But nevertheless, uh, we found that only 20% of same-sex couples lived outside the registration district. And in one case, one or both lived in the UK, but not in England and Wales. This data show that same-sex couples uh, um, prefer to get married in the registration district where they live and there may be different reasons for this. There may be economical constraints, social and personal reasons. But the point is that since they are more likely to live in a registration district where they simply can't get married, if they are not likely to change the registration district, it means that perhaps they may choose a civil ceremony and this may explain the small numbers of um, religious same-sex marriages. But there is also another element that may account for this. If considering the religious affiliation of same-sex couples that uh, got married in, the, in this in 71 places of worship that answered to our questionnaire, we found that <coughs> the overwhelming majority was uh, composed by couples where at least the one or both were affiliated with the religious organization of the place of worship. So uh, we found that only in four same-sex couples, one or both was Anglican, and that in five uh, uh, same-sex couples, one or both was Catholic. Quite uh, interestingly, we didn't find any case of a same-sex couple where one or both were um, Hindu, m Muslim, or Sikh. Um, a same-sex couple that is affiliated uh, to a religious organization that does not solemnize uh, same-sex marriage may wish to um, have their marriage solemnized in a place of worship that it is affiliated with another religious organization. And in this respect, our respondents were extremely flexible in accommodating the religious needs of same-sex couples who may uh, be affiliated to other religious organizations. And this means that same-sex couples uh, are, uh, well, they have a significant autonomy in deciding the scriptures, <coughs> the texts, the music, and the structure of, of uh, uh, the ceremony. Um, there, there are that some general restrictions that may apply, but th as I said, they are extremely general. And uh, for instance, in one place of worship, um, we found uh, they, um, they specified that there are two restrictions. The first is that the service be respectful of different faith traditions. We will not accept words that denigrate other belief systems. And secondly, the service needs to contain a religious or spiritual dimension. And also, in another place of worship, um, a spiritualist church indicated that couples are permitted to choose their texts, uh, as, uh, but this text uh, can't uh, be overtly Christian, or uh, they can't contain uh, uh, explicit reference to any other belief. But apart from these general constraints, we found that the uh, content of the marriage ceremony could be negotiated between uh, the couples uh, to be married and the person that was going to celebrate the marriage. 
So, uh, despite this uh, uh, flexibility, it seems that same-sex couples who are affiliated to religious organizations that do not solemnize uh, same-sex marriages uh, are not likely to um, require a religious ceremony in another, in a place of worship affiliated to another religious organization. And uh, since uh, no mainstream religion have opted in, also this element may explain the small numbers of marriages that we saw before. Because despite of the flexibility, it seems that uh, uh, the majority, well, the majority of same-sex couples that got married in those places of worship were already affiliated to the religious organization. We also tried to understand uh, the uh, dynamics and the process of decision and how uh, the congregation decided to opt in to solemnizing same-sex marriages. We asked them uh, who firstly proposed that the place should be registered for these purposes. And in, we found that in some cases this issue had been brought up by um, a person in a key position in the administration of the place of worship. So a trustee, a propietor, or the, a minister, or a spiritual leader. And uh, in uh, many places of worship, these roles are not strictly uh, defined and uh, um, separated, so the uh, minister may be also the trustee or the propietor. But nevertheless, uh, this issue was brought up by persons in a key position, and then it was discussed. But in other places of worship, it, the, um, the debate whether the place should be registered for same-sex marriages was raised by members of the congregation. And in the uh, overwhelming majority of, um, in, in the, sorry, the overwhelming majority of our respondents uh, um, said that the process um, to decide whether to opt in or not uh, had been extremely um, collaborative and uh, had seen the uh, involvement of the community and the congregation. Um, for instance, when asked to comment about the general attitude uh, of the congregation, we found that no places of worship uh, recorded uh, generally against or strongly against attitude. And by contrast, nearly 80% recorded a strongly in favor or a generally in favor attitude. So 80% of our respondents did not have significant disagreement or fractures in, uh, internal to their congregation for this reason. But we also gathered some data from 20% of places of worship where the attitude was divided and mixed. And this was extremely interesting because we asked them also how they uh, had negotiated this disagreement and uh, uh, how they have had tried to solve um, different views within uh, the congregation. And we, we received uh, uh, very insightful comments. For instance, in one place of worship, they said that it, some members of the congregation thought that marriage was for one man and one woman, but that during the discussion, these people essentially said they wouldn't want to hinder anyone's journey, and so they didn't take place. They didn't. Sorry, they didn't take part in the final vote. And also, another place of worship <coughs> described a very similar dynamics because uh, it uh, said that some old members of the congregation who had been brought up when in an era when homosexuality was both unlawful and uh, thought to be sinful, decided to abstain in a vote taking, um, on opting in to same-sex marriage. And we, consider these ex we, we may consider these examples as very meaningful because they show that not only these congregations tried uh, to discuss and negotiate different views, but also that these minorities 
although not sharing the final decision, they didn't seek to prevent this decision from taking place. And, uh, it, and these comments describe the reality that perhaps we may not um, imagine. Um, but also we, um, we investigated the effects and the consequences of registering a place of worship for same-sex marriage. And we did so in respect of uh, four different realities that may be directly or indirectly involved in this process. First of all, we asked uh, our participants, our respondents, um, whether and how this decision had um, uh, affected their relation with the uh, broader religious group and with the religious institutions of their organization. Um, in the majority of cases, we found that uh, this decision had not carried out uh, a negati negative consequences. And the reason may be that the Unitarian General Assembly is supportive of same-sex marriage. And since 66% uh, uh, of our respondents were Unitarian places of worship, um, we may say that this result uh, also mirrors uh, the composition of uh, religious organizations. However, in one case, we found uh, that uh, a Baptist uh, place of worship described uh, a different situation, and uh, they said that they found uh, themselves at odds with the Baptist Union of Great Britain, because uh, they strongly urged them and other churches not to register to conduct same-sex marriage. So the, uh, the choice to register a place for same-sex marriage may have detrimental um, effects, but this depends from the general view on same-sex marriage of the um, religious organization. Um, we also asked uh, whether this decision had in any way impa um, impacted on the relation with other religious organizations. and. In the majority of cases, we uh, didn't receive uh, comments on the point that highlighted uh, significant consequences. So for some uh, places of worship, this, this decision simply didn't uh, have an effect on, in respect of other religious congregations. But however, in two cases, we found uh, uh, negative effects. For instance, uh, one place of worship emphasized that uh, there are uh, local churches and leaders who uh, are not willing to work with them, and also that when he first uh, or she first uh, arrived <coughs> to that place of worship, um, they were labeled as the minister from that church. And similarly, another um, place of worship reported that among the more conservative Christian communities, there was some serious concern publicly expressed. So the choice may have um, a may raise negative reactions from other religious congregations, but it may also uh, cause positive effects. And for instance, it may foster um, networks and uh, interactions with other um, faith or religious groups that are supportive in respect of LGBT demands. And uh, for instance, one uh, Unitarian place of worship um, said that this decision had, uh, had created positive links with other groups. Um, and the interesting point is that some of these places of worship, um, they have not sol uh, solemnized uh, any same-sex marriage. But nevertheless, the decision to opt in had an impact on the way in which they were perceived by other religious organizations or uh, had an impact uh, in their relation with other religious institutions within their congregation. And it also had significant effects uh, in respect of the 
um, of the of the way in which a place of worship was uh, perceived by the local community, and uh, um, it also affected the relation between members of the same congregation. In respect of these two dimensions, we found uh, uh, both places of worship emphasizing negative effects uh, and uh, places of worship emphasizing positive effects. So um, this choice may lead uh, to both uh, uh, negative, it may create fractures, it may impair some relations, but it also may be useful uh, from uh, different perspectives. For instance, one uh, place of worship emphasized that this decision caused the hostility and was probably and was a suspected cause of, of vandalism. So the community may be hostile to this decision and even if they are small churches, they may still experience uh, vandalism and hostilities. But other places of worship emphasize a completely different reality. For instance, um, one church in a way described the, the decision to opt in uh, as uh, answering and representing the values of the community. So they, um, they said that this ch the church is inclusive and uh, uh, we do not exclude same-sex couples and really represents, uh, this really represents the community. So an important point uh, between a, a local place of worship and the idea of a, an in inclusive community. But also we found uh, that in some cases this choice, this choice had strengthened or had fostered links and relation with other groups in the community that may be um, interested and they may work uh, to challenge discriminations on other grounds in respect of race and gender. So it helped to create and establish links and networks with the other realities in the, in the community that may be not religious that, but that may still um, care about sexual orientation, discrimination, and uh, discrimination in respect of other backgrounds. Similarly, in respect of the on, in respect of how the registration had affected uh, um, the congregation in the place of worship, we found uh, in for a few places uh, uh, of worship that uh, a few members of the congregation had uh, left the church and the congregation because they felt they couldn't um, continue to worship in a church where same-sex marriages were actually solemnized. But these uh, places of worship are a minority. In the majority of cases, um, we found that this choice either had no significant impact or, on the contrary, that it had a positive impact. And um, we found that, uh, well, our respondents uh, expressed this in many ways and emphasized that the choice of registering a same sex uh, place of worship for same sex marriage may enhance the relation between uh, the community but also within the congregation in different ways. For instance, some places of worship said they gained new members especially among young people and among LGBT people who felt safe. And also some places of worship emphasized that some members in their congregation came out after this decision and so they felt free to express uh, their identity. But also um, we found that this choice uh, motivated and led the congregation as this participant said, to take um, two greater challenges in social work and, for instance, in support of refugees. So the idea that opting in to same-sex marriage may be a vehicle not only to challenge <coughs> the exclusion of same-sex couples in respect of, sa of a religious same-sex marriage, 
but also uh, it may be a start to think and uh, to act in respect of other uh, problems and issues and inequalities that may be considered as uh, significant. Other places of worship instead uh, emphasize uh, another element which may be called as, uh, referred to as uh, advertising or marketing. The idea is that by opting in, uh, as this participant said, uh, they clearly uh, positioned in the market. So they made clear that they are a church with uh, a certain set of values and that those who want such a church know clearly who we are. So this choice may be a way to make clear the values of a, commu of a congregation and uh, also to make clear the difference between them and other churches in the local community. <coughs> and also we found that in 90 places, 90% um, of places of worship, no person had refused to participate in a same-sex marriage ceremony. And this is really significant because it's, it shows that despite the, um, the different uh, negative comments uh, uh, and many claims that have been made about the negative impact that same-sex marriage may have on uh, religious organizations, we didn't find any data to support this. On the contrary, we found that the choice to solemnize the same-sex marriages may have different positive consequences. To conclude, uh, um, well, this research uh, is the first research that uh, addressed this issue from a qualitative and quantitative, well, quantitative perspective, and uh, it, were, it featured in some generalist and uh, uh, specialist media. Uh, this interest shows that there is a growing attention uh, to the reality of uh, religious same-sex marriages in England and Wales, and we uh, hope that this uh, research may foster a debate about the relation between uh, religion, sexual orientation, and equality, and that more generally it may lead uh, to question whether we accept uh, um, that in England and Wales, same-sex couples are currently excluded in 99.5% uh, 99, 99 of all places of worship. And thank you.